I'm gonna bring on Mr. Transitive Bullshit himself. What's up, <laughs> Travis? How you doing, dude? I'm good, Demetrius. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Dude, can I just say this in front of everyone? I'm going to declare my love for your email. Oh, uh, thank <laughs> you. That you have. And I don't know if we want to put you on blast and say it to everyone, but let's just say that your email is probably the best that I have ever seen. And if anyone is not following you on Twitter, I highly recommend that you are such an incredible follow. And you do all kinds of Twitter spaces to talk about what's happening in AI and ML all the yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, I, something that we're all learning about this space. It's so new to, together and uh, just have a, a good group of people that we like to uh, discuss the, the, the latest weekly news. Um, working with uh, Ben's Bytes uh, newsletter as well. And, we uh, and just try uh, to distill it down and make it, make it accessible for people. That's it, man. So it's super cool to have you here. As you know, I'm a fan and now you're on this agent kick. I'm going to give you 10 minutes on the clock uh, <laughs> as if I follow the clock strictly, as you know. <laughs> but that's the fun of having big cushion breaks at the end so I can be a little bit more liberal. I'll share your screen for you. You should be good to go. I'll be back in 10 minutes, man. Awesome. Thank you, Demetrius. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> as, as Demetrius said, um, I am transitive bullshit, uh, otherwise known as, as Travis Fisher. Um, uh, quick, quick background on, on, on me and, and uh, wh why I'm, I'm chatting about agents today. Uh, so I have a, a strong background in open source and uh, the AI space has been um, changing ex exponentially, as I'm sure most of you are aware. Uh, when ChatGPT released six months ago, I released the ChatGPT NPM package and then uh, released this uh, Twitter bot, ChatGPT bot on Twitter. Uh, that has about 130,000 followers now. Um, I also run a, uh, a, dis a Discord called ChatGBTHackers.dev, which has about 10,000 uh, AI developers in that. Um, and uh, I've just been building a lot of open source uh, experiments and, and demos uh, to really uh, maximize my rate of learning around this space. And uh, more recently, I've started to really focus on AI agents, and um, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, about that. Uh, so, <laughs> there's been a lot of hype around agents recently. Um, you know, AutoGPT, uh, as an example, in this this GitHub star chart, is the uh, fastest growing, uh, mo most GitHub starred repo of all time, um, which is just just insane. I mean, a month after uh, AutoGPT. Uh, launched it it had more stars than like docker kubernetes like some of these just massive uh traditional um open source projects and you know the the there's a reason why there's there's so much hype around it uh it's it's you know pe people are are, are in, in enraptured by the the possibilities um at the same time right now the the vast majority of, of these AI, ai agents are, are actually just toys um, so let's let's uh, be really clear about what we're talking about. Um, what actually is an agent? <laughs> um, it, the, I'll, I'll be clear that there are a few other definitions of agents coming from uh, a tr a traditional um, machine learning and and reinforcement learning. They agents are a, a term that uh, is not super well defined, but from within the scope of of this talk uh, and the type of agents that that I feel like there are the, the most promising, um, I'll define uh, agents are either autonomous or semi-autonomous programs, which in particular use the reasoning abilities of AI models to accomplish tasks. So, you know, currently uh, the, the AI models that we're talking about are LLMs, and it really only became possible to start viewing these, these language models as reasoning engines uh, fairly recently, uh, with with large foundational models like GPT 3.5 and, and GPT 4, really just just exponentially pushing the bar forward in terms of their ability to uh, do reasoning, and then uh, you know certain um, prompting techniques such as chain of thought uh, or, or self reflection, um, just adding even more uh, robustness around their ability to actually reason. Um, 
<laughs> and you know, I, I would define an agent as having a couple of, of key components. So, you know, an agent is you can think of it as uh, you give an agent a very, very well specified task. Uh, you you give it some resources for accomplishing that task. Those resources could be things like uh, compute time. It could be actual financial money. It could be tools such as access to a third uh, access to your browser, access to your user accounts. Um, it could be uh, you know more more traditional tools like like access to APIs or or, or proprietary data. Um, but so you, you you give an agent a task. You give an agent some resources to accomplish that task. Uh, generally, the the implementation of the agent is going to involve some planning or de decomposition of the the task into subtasks. And when you when you do that, there's there's a need to do some scheduling and prioritization around these these subtasks. And and ultimately, it ends up looking very much uh, similar to uh, orchestration or or scheduling in in like a traditional operating system where you have let's say a lot of threads or a lot of work uh, that uh, that need to happen and you need to prioritize and actually uh, schedule schedule those tasks to be executed. Um, now this can get very complicated very quickly. Oh, and, and there's also the the whole external memory. Um, and this would be things like existing databases or uh, vector databases. The main difference being that vector databases are kind of fuzzy. And for a lot of, of what agents are, are going to work really well with or where, where their strengths are going to shine, um, the, the key advantage is, is that you don't need to have as uh, specific of, of rule-based rule and, and uh, 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 exhaustive uh, programming that 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 makes makes things really explicit. They they shine in areas where where uh, you can be really flexible, and that's you know a, a a reason why vector databases, even though there's a lot of hype, there is there is this this flexible as aspect to them in terms of their using them for retrieval. <laughs> um, so I view agents very much as a spectrum. Uh, I think when when a lot of people say say agents, they 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 jump straight to the right side of this this graph and, and think about fully self driving programs. Um, I think of, of agents as uh, a spectrum where you, you start off at the at the very bottom. You have uh, let's let's think of think of the the large language model as a CPU um, or as a, a reasoning engine. And and for the purposes of this talk, we can think of them as a black box. That and and you know they're 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 great at understanding and generating natural language, but the the thing that's really game changing about more recent LLMs is their ability to, to reason, and and that's where if you if you start to think about them as as CPUs inside of a a fundamentally new paradigm of compute, um, and then you can you can ask yourself, well, what what is what does the world of of programs look like that are built on top of those those language models as reasoning engines um, at, at built on top of those CPUs, and uh, I, I view those programs as agents. Um, and you know, on on the one hand, you have very traditional deterministic programming. Uh, you can think of this as programs that are written by a human. Uh, the human is definitely driving driving the bus. And on the 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 other hand, uh, other side of the, the spectrum, you have fully self driving programs. Um, these are, are things like uh, AutoGPT or Baby AGI, uh, and the the idea is is you give you give the the fully self driving agent um, or fully autonomous agent uh, a task, and it just goes off and, and completely on its own uh, accomplishes that task. And one of the things that that I really want to drive home is that um, just like uh, just like with with self driving cars. Trying to jump straight to self-driving programs is a mistake. Um, it, it, it's it's amazing from a marketing perspective. It's amazing from a uh, the perspective of of showing people like like what will be possible soon. But you know this is LLMs in production. We're talking about uh, what's possible today. And and uh, my main point that I, I want to make here is uh, that that we really want to start kind of more towards the left hand side of this graph. But it's really a spectrum. And the question is, you know, how can we how can we start with more deterministic agents uh, and 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 slightly more constrained uh, uh, areas, just like we, we we've done with with self self driving cars? There's a spectrum there, 
um, and then uh, gradually move towards more self-driving programs over time. <laughs> so some of the key challenges, uh, and I'll go through this kind of kind of quickly here, uh, would be one, agents have a, a tendency, the more autonomous you get, they, they tend to get stuck in loops or, or diverge uh, away from the original path. And, and they, they don't oftentimes have a good ability to reflect and actually get back on, on track. Um, there's something known as a composability gap, where even if, if uh, a, an agent is really good at solving like one sub problem, um, the, the, the original problem, which is composed of many sub problems, uh, the, the kind of probability or, or, or reliability of, of that, that overall agent um, decreases very, very quickly. Uh, another thing is like, if you, if you just give an agent, uh, a task and say, go off and do this, um, this becomes a, a very challenging UX problem. So it's not just on the algorithmic side. It's not just on the, on the, the, um, developer side, the UX of, of actually from a user standpoint, understanding what these agents are doing and being able to interpret them and also being able to, to keep a human in the loop is, is really important. And that, that requires, uh, really, really a lot of work on the UX side. Uh, another challenge is, is kind of latency and, and cost. Most of the, the, the current AI uh, or agent frameworks use default to using, um, you know, large foundational hosted models. And uh, the cost there is something where when you have uh, recursive uh, uh, calls, like that can, that can add up really, really quickly. Um, and and also, uh, finally, safety is, is, is of paramount importance. Um, if you are actually giving an agent right access to the world on your behalf, uh, making sure you keep, keep some guardrails on that is super important. So I'm just going to uh, uh, go through some, some advice for, for building towards reliable agents. Uh, you know, the first, first and, and most important piece of advice is to actually constrain the, the, the types of tasks that you're, you're setting out to, to accomplish with, with agents. Um, anything that is, is too generic or, or, or too large, I, I think you're, you're going to run into uh, uh, problems with. In, in my opinion, uh, agents are a really good fit today for more of uh, uh, very repetitive uh, uh, tasks, robotic pro uh, process R uh, RPA type tasks, um, tasks that, that uh, you would want to have be always on in the background working on your behalf. Um, I mean, another, another uh, approach is to constrain the set of tools that you, that you use. So uh, instead of giving an agent access to, to a thousand tools, if you know that there's only a couple of tools that you need for a given task, just constrain it that way. Um, keeping a human in the loop as part of the feedback process. This is this is one 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 area where uh, if you compare um, agents to kind of traditional workflows, uh, this is this is an area where um, agents can fundamentally improve because they're they're built on top of uh, machine learning models, and, and you can build in some. Uh, human human feedback loops that improve and learn and 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 get more uh, better at, at solving the task over over time. So this is something that I think is a fundamental key key primitive uh, here. Uh, another uh, approach is to kind of build up uh, an ecosystem of very reliable primitives. I'll I'll talk about this in a second. Um, pref wherever possible, pref preferred deterministic code, and you might start off with a very generic, like, like say GPT-4, but uh, move towards deterministic code eventually. Um, one, one thing I, wa I wanna say is, is multi-agent systems are distributed systems. And you can th there's a lot that we can learn from traditional distributed systems in that context. Uh, one example uh, here is a recent paper uh, by NVIDIA and some researchers um, called Voyager uh, that is solving uh, uh, various Minecraft tasks. And, and one of the key in insights here was that the, the AI would generate uh, uh, code-based skills uh, uh, on the fly and uh, evaluate the, the, those, those skills as kind of subroutines and, and have them uh, build up this library of skills over time that, that, that it could re keep, keep referencing uh, backwards. And uh, I, I'm running out of time here. So last thing I want to I say, um, if, if you view kind of the, the ideal agent as this fully autonomous, a uh, single entity, given a single task, um, I am advocating for uh, more of, of, of a kind of scripted agent workflow that, that breaks up a task into subtasks. And, and in particular, if you, you think of, of, of 
the, the uh, solution here as, as a series of nodes. Every one of these, these nodes is something that you can reason about, no matter, no matter how, how intelligent the underlying language models become. Um, this, the, the ability for, for humans to reason about the steps is, is fundamental. And whether, whether this uh, graph on the right is uh, you know, generated um, statically or whether it's generated on the fly, like I still think it's it's very important to be able to have this level of interpretability because you can also then start to think about well this this graph is is kind of a higher level programming language and we're moving away from like traditional I'm writing Python code to I'm writing in in these higher level uh, primitives and in that world we can we can apply lessons from traditional software engineering you know at the the node level of this graph what does a a unit test look like what does uh, writing an eval to uh, maybe start off with with a very maybe a, a node starts off with GPT four. It's a very generic model. You run you run it uh, a thousand times. You get a thousand inputs and outputs. You distill that down into a very fi uh, fi fine grained model. Um, these are all lessons that that I think we can take from traditional software engineering and apply in this context. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I super quick quick version of this lightning talk, but that's that's it on my end. So uh, yeah. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. This was incredible as I knew it would be. Agents are so hot right now and it is so hard to figure out how you can get them to work and you are deep in the trenches. I know that I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, Brian, and he was like, yeah, I tried auto GPT and all I was left with was a $200 open AI bill and <laughs> I did not get it working the whole time. So yeah. it's good to see another friend of mine was like, pretty sure AI Twitter is gaslighting me because this shit never works when I try it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's there's definitely a, a, a lot of hype and a lot of excitement around what will be possible in the future. For today, I think you, you want to be more on the, the left hand of that spectrum where you're writing more deterministic code code German and using LLMs as, as little pieces instead of big pieces of, of fully autonomous, exactly. um, at least for the time being. Yeah, we're not there yet. All right, man. I'm going to kick you off because oh. we're keeping it rolling. Thank you, Demetrius. Thank you, Travis. I'll talk to you later, man. And I'll see you in uh, San Francisco, maybe? If you're yeah, in. yeah. Yeah. I'm over at HF Bureau. Uh, would, would, would love to uh, to meet you when you're, when you're out in SF. All right. Sweet. Talk to you later, man. All right. Bye.